Hi, my name is Bridget Tihin, and I've been invited to take part in Tipperary's Bealtaine Festival. And my project for this festival is Tea and Bread. I'm going to be looking at traditional bread making and also the rituals of tea and bring them all together at the end for a final party. So I've been researching um, lots of recipes from my own uh, kitchen supply here of brown bread and looking into my family's history as well of bread making. That's my mother's recipe there. And here is a recipe I got from my sister-in-law Elizabeth McConville and she got it from the Ivory Cuckoo School when she was doing a workshop there. And we've made adaptions and we really like it here. So I also have now a collection of my old cookery recipes. This one is buttermilk oaten bread. Sister Anna's cookbook for healthy living, very no nonsense recipes. And this one for brown bread is very close to the original old fashioned one. The Bog Hill Centre have a beautiful soda bread, which uh, starts to get more complicated with additions of pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and adaptations as well. The High Bank Orchard in Kilkenny near Callan has um, an excellent cookbook with a very fancy bread uh, they've called Good Bleep Bread and it has lots of interesting stuff in it. A vegan and gluten free version came from Mia Carney, the artist, and she shared this with me online and I've taken it down and it's very good for those people with dietary needs. I'd like to invite you all now to look in your recipe collections and share with us your favourite recipe. It could be a recipe that you've adapted over the years, so you might need to hand write it out. And now I'm going to interview my own mother, Anastasia Tian, about bread making. At what age did you start making brown bread with your mother? About six years of age. And how did you learn how to cook? Oh, no explaining at all. Once, once she had kneaded the bread properly yeah. a couple of times, you know, different ways on, on the breadboard. And then uh, and straighten it out and, and just cut across, uh, right across it. And where did you cook it then? It was a range, it was called. A range, right. A range. Oh, yes, it had to be very, very hot Yeah, when you're putting it in. And how long would it take to cook? Um, about an hour it would take. I look at it to see how it's doing. Did you ever make any changes? No, I didn't make any changes, really, because that's what I was taught, that looking at her doing it. Mm. Uh, when she used to do it, I used to make a small one. Beside it, the fire would be going all day in in the kitchen. You, you'd cook the the bread before you cook the dinner. Mm. Before, you, so as the warm the kitchen would be nice and or the oven would be nice and warm before you start cooking for the dinner. And did you use buttermilk? I did, yes, mm -hmm. always buttermilk. Yeah, we had our own cows. We used to churn, and we'd have our own buttermilk and our own homemade butter as well. Mm. Of course, it makes sense to use the buttermilk because it's a byproduct of making butter. So, what was your favourite topping? Well, you could, you, yeah, we used to have a few bees in the garden as well, and so we used to have honey, honey. My my dad used to make the honey get the honey because um, we wouldn't be allowed near. So what else did you put on the brown bread? Sometimes just jam. Mm -hmm. So any tips on how to make brown bread or especially how long to knead it for? You'd know yourself when it's coming together. Yeah. Well, when you have a milk in it and all that and, and you twist it around a couple of times on the table uh, in flour, you know, yeah. spread flour and and fold it up, you know, and mix it in include until it's the right consistency mm. and then shape it, you know. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to do that before you make any signs on the top of it, you know. Yeah, yeah I still love baking bread. Mm. 
and a good heart open then you are and, yeah. and watch it don't burn it <laughs> so what's your fondest memory of your mother baking bread she used to always leave room for me to make my little one do you eat them yourself or would you share them oh no I'd share them with the lads you know there were eight of us in it yeah and would you call it brown soda bread I would brown soda bread and would you ever have used yogurt instead of buttermilk? Yeah, well, we didn't have a yogurt in our day. So buttermilk was the best thing. So do you think people make their own of it now? Oh, they do, yes. They have their own set of things to put in it. But if you weren't using a weighing scales, I'm sure every recipe then would be quite unique. Or a cup full of this or a cup full of yeah. You use a cup for measurement, maybe. Besides flowers, what else went in? We usually use bread soda bread, yeah. and salt. Uh, maybe a spoon of sugar, you know, one yeah. spoon like, for the big, you know, for the whole lot of it. Yeah. It wouldn't be sweet. Are there any areas to look out for then when making brown bread? Some women are very heavy putting bread soda in the bread, and it's horrible when it's too much bread soda. And would you ever use baking powder? The baking powder more for making buns. And would you ever throw an egg in? Sometimes I would. Yeah, I would if I had them plenty. I would. So it makes it richer. And do you have a favourite place now you buy brown bread? I uh, well, I have, and I haven't. There's a place in where I, sometimes where I shop, mm. and and uh, they have a homemade brown bread. They have a woman making brown bread. Well, thank you very much, Stacia, for sharing your memories of making brown soda bread. Yeah, not at all. You're welcome. The recipe I'd like to do today is from a very old book. It's so old it's missing its cover. And it's called Full and Plenty. And it's called Wholemeal Bread 1. They actually have three versions of it here on page 16. We'll now get the ingredients and get going, okay? Now I have a gas oven, so I'm going to light that and um, put it at gas mark 6 before I begin, so it's nice and warm, okay? And I have my tray as well. We're going to use a tray. So now we have our bowl our sieve and our wooden spoon for mixing, our weighing scales and our ingredients to hand. So we're just going to try this um, recipe. So it's one and a quarter pounds of wholemeal to start, pound and a quarter of wholemeal. Here we go. And now I'm just adding in a quarter of quarter pound of white flour. Now it's important to sieve that, getting rid of any lumps. So in it goes and then we mix in the other dry ingredients which are the salt. So we need a teaspoon of salt. We'll just roughly do that. That should do it. Bread soda is next. Bread soda. It's looking for one teaspoon. Now definitely this needs a sieve. You can also use your hand as well. Get the lumps out. So it's only and then a teaspoon of cream of tartar. This is all the dry ingredients and we're going to mix those well. Now after you've all mixed it well, you make a well in the centre. I love this part, it's quite kind of um, satisfying to make a little well there, a little hole, a little 
for the next part. So then we need um, the liquid. So I'm going to get the buttermilk now and put it in. And it doesn't tell me exactly how much to use. It just says mix in enough to make a stiff dough. So I'm going to guess that about maybe that much to start. So I'm going to put in about 300 maybe. It's definitely different from milk. Around we go, mixing in. So I would say we'll need more buttermilk there, definitely. So we'll start adding in enough. It's funny they don't give an exact amount. It's just, it's called to mix. Most recipes now would have would have amounts. Um, so it's starting to come together a little bit better as a we're going to be kneading this recipe. This is very traditional. My mother would have made this type initially when I was a young girl. It's quite heavy. Again, good exercise. No machines needed here. I think it's coming together nicely. So the next stage, I'm going to get my um, chopping board. I'm going to use my chopping board rather than the table directly. Um, and we'll get on to the kneading stage. Space. So you can use flour as well on your hands just to bring it all together. It's a little bit sticky. So put that in there. We'll just bring it together a bit more before we put it out on the tray. Feels lovely and soft. So I think we're okay now. And what I, my mother used to do was scrape the bits in the bowl and then use those on the tray as well. And then comes the kneading stage. Bringing it together. I think we need more flour. starts to rattle. <laughs> Try not to waste our flour. So what you're looking for, I suppose, is as um, little cracks as possible. Okay. Take your time at this stage and enjoy the whole kneading process because so many recipes now are the pour in the tin types. So this isn't a pour in the tin easy peasy. This involves you getting your hands in to shape the brown bread. 
And this kind of comes back to me in an instinctual kind of way, or from memory. Pushing it out and then bringing it, and folding it back on itself, and then bringing it underneath. And then rocking it so that all those new creases then become softened in. And then using your knuckles, I like it. Now I don't know when to stop now. I think we might kind of bring it in. So I'm going to get a little bit of flour now and put it on my tray. This prevents sticking. And then this is the exciting part. And very traditional. You make a cross. It's a sign of the cross. Now some people use a knife. But I think... Uh, I don't remember my mother using a knife, but I don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe I'll try the knife. So it's a cut. Maybe it was a cut first. It was, I think. And then she used to use the, the handle. Just bring them out a bit. And then... So you have the cross made, and then she used to put four points in each corner. And I've heard that this is to let the fairies out so they don't ruin your bread. So, into the oven we go. And now it's time to clean up. So now we're going to carefully turn it out on a wire tray. There's a little bit of cracking going on in the base and my mother used to do this knocking. And if it's hollow, it means it's done. And another thing people like to do as well is to cover it with a clean tea towel so that um, the crust which is quite hard, um, might be a little bit softer. So you let it cool down and the steam will keep it softer um, under the tea towel. So now we're going to cut this and see what it looks like inside. This is the traditional brown bread. Traditionally, you would cut it into four. And then cut slices off this. It's quite nice and crusty. Still probably a little warm. Nice crumb. Okay. So you can wrap the older bread Keep it for later. Uh, so, we'll get some butter. Okay. We'll just... Um, mm, really nice. Hi, now I'm going to make Mia's brown bread. It's also very similar to a friend of mine, Kieran's brown bread. So these are contemporary recipes that are suitable for vegans. And they use um, oat, oats, um, 
kind of regular oats that you get from the supermarket. But before we start, what's very important is to line our tin. So we don't want it sticking because these are quite sticky. So I've got some parchment here. And I just, I'm a bit rough with this. I'm just going to line it in there and then use some butter paper. Just the tail end of the butter paper. And put it on the inside. So it's very like my recipe in that you pour it into the tin. So hopefully that will work. So we'll just swap over. Now we'll put in 500 grams of oats. In here. And then we need a teaspoon of the bicarbonate of soda or bread soda. This helps it rise, obviously. So I heaped one of those, and I'm using an old medicine spoon. And this method, I'm just going to smash the lumps out with my hand, like that. And just fill it. And then a pinch of salt. So, good pinch. And mix all that around. Now the recipe calls for a tablespoon of treacle as well as a 500 gram of soya, so soya yogurt. So I've got this soya yogurt here and I'm just wondering if I maybe, let's see how you open it there. Would it be better to mix it? Mix the treacle in with the yogurt first, I wonder. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a well here in the middle. And I'm just going to pour all the yogurt in. And then, I'm not a huge fan of treacle. But I know it could be important for taste, so I'm just going to grab some of it. It's very hard to measure, so I'm going to just air on the underside <laughs> and just let it go in there. I'll mix it around. Gives it that kind of extra depth of taste. So we don't want it, obviously streaking around in it too much so it's a bit like using golden syrup so now we're going to mix it together until it comes to a stiff dough and we will then pour it into our tub. There we go. Maybe a bit dry looking, I'm not sure. Maybe you can tell me. Flatten it in. I think it looks a little dry. We'll see how it turns out. When you have it all in the tin, you can add some sesame seeds. One of my favourites. Oops. <laughs> or sunflower seeds. You can mix the two. Some people also use... Um, some porridge oats as well so i won't add any more and that goes in to um 
an oven that's 180 centigrade for about an hour. Thank you. I'm going to put that in the oven for one hour about. Now I'm going to try see if this is ready. Our gluten-free bread. It's very hot still. Didn't seem to rise as much. Maybe I needed to put a bit more. It's not too bad though. I'll try some butter on it. I don't think anything can't be improved with a load of butter, personally. <laughs> Let's see what that tastes like. Mmm. 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 Very nice. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. I love the um, yogurty taste. Very nice. I think that's a winner. This is our vegan loaf. After cooling down a little, and it's certainly looks quite denser than the other loaf but really really tasty <laughs>